Hi everyone. I hope you all are doing good and you all are healthy. So in my today's video session, I'm going to explain the notion of app registrations in Microsoft Azure Cloud. I think the people who are working on Microsoft Azure Cloud, they must be aware that everything which works on Microsoft Azure needs an app registration. Any application which makes use of Azure, there must be one app registration that takes care of identity and access to all other Azure resources basically. So without wasting much time, let's quickly start with the creation of these app registrations. Okay, so before a precondition, before creating the app registration, we must be ensured that whether we have permission to create it basically. So how we can check that? Uh, log into your Microsoft Azure portal. It will look something like this. I have logged in with my email ID, which is a outlook.com email ID. So if I go here, go to Azure Active Directory over here, okay, and click on users. So that is my user, that's my email ID basically, okay. Now from here, go to the user settings. Okay, can you see this switch app registrations? User can register applications. If it is set to yes, then only you can create app registrations. And if it is set to no, then you don't have the permission to create app registrations. In enterprise level or in enterprise software development teams, usually the DevOps will be having complete control over the creation of app registrations. But there are some organizations where developers has the flexibility as well as luxury to create app registrations whenever they need. So this particular switch, we must ensure that this is enabled in order to create app registrations. Once this has been verified, now we can go to the home page and search for the app registrations. There are multiple ways you can navigate to app registration, but the most used one is this one. Okay, go to the Microsoft Azure search bar and type app registration and you will see uh, the automatic hint available over here. Click on app registrations. So at present, I don't have any apps registered in my uh, Microsoft Azure directory, which is the default directory or Active Directory, I can say. Okay, so what I will do is I will click on create new registration. So if I see all applications, there is nothing registered. At. So click on new registration and give a meaningful name. So for example, take I'm creating a web API, okay, which will serve the need of supplying data for my n number of clients who want to consume this service okay i'm creating a restful service basically so what i will do is i will give a name okay the name should be pretty meaningful and reading the name itself you should identify okay uh, what that service is meant for for what all project it belongs to what domain it belongs to and yeah the identification, unique identification basically. So what I will do is I will use a simple approach. Say, uh, I will give my company's name first. Say, MB Systems. Okay, inside I have a department called uh, Dev Department, let's say, Dev. Then what I will mention is what this application name, basically it's an API, say, Order API. And then I will mention the unique identifier. Let's start with zero one. Okay. But you are free to follow your own conventions. But usually you should give the app registration name in such a way that it will give this basic piece of information like the company name, the department, the API name and its unique identifier. Okay. Then comes the supported account types. Okay, so what we are going to choose, there are four options, accounts in this organization directory only, the default directory only, single tenant, 
okay this means this is my default directory okay this is my account basically and i have only one active directory which is default directory now if i select this option now whatever users i will add to my default active directory only those users can access this api okay or this app registration icons what is the second option says accounts in any organizational directory any azure ad directory see the precondition it must be azure ad directory and it says it's a multi-tenant so whatever organization now mbs is my organization say there is some more some other organization like uh you can name cbs or you can name coca-cola or you can name pepsi okay if they are also using microsoft azure and they also have azure ad directory then if i choose this option then trust me these organizations software services can access my web apis okay <clears throat> There are scenarios where you are required to provide some API services outside your organizational boundaries. So in such situations, you make use of this option. Third option, accounts in any organizational directory, that is any Azure AD directory, multi-tenant. Okay, the second option, with personal Microsoft accounts like Skype and Xbox. Apart from giving access to uh, other organizations you can give access to the personal accounts also an individual microsoft account holder can also access this api okay that can be configured with this option personal microsoft accounts only where you are giving access to only personal microsoft account holders so any user who is holding a microsoft account yes he can authenticate himself in order to access this api so for this example i am going to select accounts in my organization only okay so click on before clicking on register yeah the most important topic of redirect uri so what does that say we will return the authentication response to this uri after successfully authenticating the user providing this now is optional and it can be changed later also but a value is required for most authentication scenarios now in order to access this order web api first the user has to authenticate himself and how the authentication takes place basically the authentication is a federated authentication the moment he tries to access this api first he has to authenticate he or she has to authenticate himself or her, herself by uh, yeah by passing the required client app id as well as the client app secret which is created for this application that part i am going to explain in a few moments but just for your, your information i'm telling that we need this additional information once we create this app registration basically okay so what i will do is whenever somebody want to authenticate to my web api and once they are successfully authenticated i will ask them to redirect to this particular uri so i have selected there are three possible options public client or native mobile and desktop applications you can select for the web apis or web applications select this one and for single page application especially for angular react or any javascript applications please make use of this option okay now i am selecting web because this also serves the purpose of single page applications also so i am selecting web and just give a callback url over here so let me give one example like portal dash mbs dash dev dot mbs dot com and then i will mention a path called auth dash callback so what this endpoint does is basically whenever the user successfully authenticates to my web api or to my app registration he will be redirected to the application's callback url which handles the further or which handles the successful scenario of authentication okay basically it will receive the auth token the authorization token on this endpoint and then it will take the further action from the application side so now i will click on register Oh, it should register without any issues yeah as you can see it has registered 
an application with the name MBS Dev Order API hyphen zero one. So, what is the most important information over here, guys? If you see this details, the essentials section over here, okay. This application ID is the most important piece of information which the outside world or the users who want to consume this application or API will make use of, okay. So they must make use of this application ID in order to locate this application for authentication purpose and also another most important information being the tenant ID, basically my Azure Active Directory, that is my default directory where all my resources are being located in my scenario but in enterprise level software you will be having a separate azure active directory okay and inside that azure active directory you will be having different kind of subscriptions one such example being a production subscription and non-production subscription okay under production subscription you will Create your environments which are related to your production environment and under non-production uh, subscription you will create all your resources, resource groups under that environment like the lower environment related resources. Well that's being said. Now what all the main important information we need over here is the application ID and the tenant ID or the directory ID. Okay. There is one more piece of information which I'm going to generate now it's called the client secret without client secret they can't authenticate to our web API so how to create that client secret simple go to certificates and secrets section in the left navigation pane okay now there are two approaches to authenticate okay the outside users or the applications can authenticate in two ways first of all you can upload a certificate you can buy a certificate okay the SSL certificates will be available and there will be subscriptions for them also in order to ensure security of your applications okay now what I'm doing is I'm going with the approach of client secrets okay so what is a client secret a client secret is basically a password generated by Azure for your app registration okay and one more thing I would like to mention here once you generate a client secret after the creation okay after immediately creation of that client secret you have to copy that secret somewhere because once you navigate out of that client secret uh, creation page and if you go again there then you can't access that password basically because it will be in a dot 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 that is what in a secret format it's in a password format and then onwards you won't be able to access it so after immediately creation of the client secrets we have to copy that secret and we can make use of it further while authenticating to these applications okay just keep this in mind because many people tend to forget that and when next time they try to access the secret no they can't access it because it will be in an encrypted format so now i will click on new client secret so give a meaningful description say my for example or the API secret I will say and set the expiry basically there will be three options you can go with recommended six months now I'm getting multiple here but in enterprise level subscriptions okay or in enterprise Microsoft Azure accounts they will provide three options basically okay you can select the recommended six months option or you can set the custom option or there will be one more option called never so it will basically the secret will never expire that I'm not having over here with my default active directory but yeah while creating an enterprise level uh, client secrets you will be given that option so you can make use of that so what I would like to do, I will go with the recommended six months option. After six months, I have to regenerate this client secret and I have to share with my clients basically in order to make authentication or communication with my API. So what I will do, I will click on add. See, can you see that this value, this value is the most important information for me now. Now, if I don't copy this and if I close this pane, gone i i can't see this value once again so what i have to do is simply just copy it okay and keep it somewhere 
so that it can be used further okay now the moment i close this pane okay and if i go there once again okay order api and if i go to client secrets oh that's great i'm able to see it but usually uh, we won't be able to see this piece of information because it will be shown in a dotted format okay no worries that's good so this is the another piece of information which we will make use of while authenticating to this app registration or the application which makes use of this auth uh, uh, application registration in order to provide uh, authentication or identity provider okay so that's it from this session basically this is the bare minimum thing that the azure developer has to do whenever they create a new application whenever they create a new api okay or whenever they create a new web application i can say okay it may be a background job it may be a web application it may be a desktop application or it may be a simple api controller they must ensure that they have its respective app registration created because app registration is the resource through which most of the identity or authentication related services are provided to azure users okay so that's it from this session i hope you people understood the notion of app registrations over here and its uh, significance in azure cloud development thank you for listening and have a nice day